try to cover for her. I don't just mean not to report on her, but to actively cover from her. And that's really what Nixon didn't have. Nixon had the media against him. And so his crimes were on the front page every day. And he day. was an angel compared to them because he wasn't a good liar. He, he, he was small potatoes compared to Hillary. When I, was, when I went in for my sentencing, every journalist in the room n knew that a double standard has, is underway here. And yet, I could just see the joy in their faces, the anticipation. They were Scum. so excited about the idea of me being locked up. And then they looked so dismayed when a Clinton judge refused to send me to federal prison. They walked out of the room crushed. But at least they didn't get to put you kind of in the brainwashing hooskow. In fact, he wrote some articles describing what it was like, and they want you to go to psychological testing now. No psychological history, no criminal record up to that point, done nothing, presidential advisor, and then the judge wants to send you so they can, I guess, try to diagnose you with something. Well, if I, you know, if I was like Jeffrey Dahmer and ended up with bodies in my refrigerator, it would be understandable. I'd need to have my head examined. But here I was giving money to a college friend um, and, and doing it without any prospect of gain uh, and doing it for an obvious motive. We've been friends for 25 years. This is one of the first people I got to know when I came to America as an exchange student from India. So this really did, wasn't a complex psychological offense. And so it's really odd. I had almost a year of mandatory psychiatric testing uh, and counseling. Happily, that process has now been stopped. Uh, but even so, the very fact that, it, that I went through it, 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 it felt a little bit like a re-education project. Well, isn't that what the Soviets did? I mean, that's, that's how they started it, was making people that didn't like corruption, you know, saying, go see this shrink. And then a decade later, it was, let's send you to a forced labor camp like Alexander Schultz and Eaton. Yes, I mean, look, there are good people left in America. I went to see a government-mandated psychiatrist. I was ordered to do it by the judge. I walked in the room. And the guy goes, are you that guy, D'Souza? And I go, yeah. He goes, what the heck are you doing here? I go, well, I've been ordered to come here for a psychiatric evaluation. And then I told him what it was for. And the guy just laughed and laughed and laughed. And he basically said, okay, well, he goes, I get the picture. I mean, he, he saw right away well, sure. this was a racket. And that's the good news. I agree. I see racket. that as well. I see that as well. But what about the younger students now? That's probably a classical liberal. What about the young ones now that want people arrested for their speech and are taking over the colleges? Is that not one of the most frightening authoritarian veins we see in this country? I think it is. You know, when I was a student a generation ago, we had, we had the leftists who had come, you know, fresh from the 60s. Uh, but there was an older generation of the classical liberals who exercised a moderating influence. And I think what's different now is that that generation has passed on. It's gone. And so these radical leftists now in many places are fully in charge. And so we are beginning to see this re really chilling uh, kind of brain brainwashing operation going on with young people. This whole idea, you're entitled to free college. Now, remember, that's a scam because... You know, the federal government can't pay for everybody's free college. They're going to have to borrow money. The national debt is going to go up. The same young people who want free college are going to inherit that national debt. So all that Obama is doing is he's reaching into young people's back pockets, lifting their wallet, taking their future earnings. It's another form of, of, of student loan. But also they say the first two years to sucker you into it. And then they're just going to balloon the charges uh, later. And the more money you put into education, the more expensive it gets. That's exactly right. And it's, it's not even robbing Peter to pay Paul. In this case, it's robbing Paul to pay Paul. But they still want to imagine they're going to win the lottery ticket. It's this get-rich-quick type of, uh, attitude. Yeah, and, 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 and what's in it for the progressives? What's in it for them is that they get to colonize another huge sector of the economy so that it's not the government. People say the government will control. It's not the government. It's the people in government. Guys like Obama become like tycoons. And they become tycoons on a scale never before imagined. They I become mean, oligarchs. Is, yeah, Bill Gates or Steve Jobs has very little power over your life or mine. They have to convince us to go buy their stuff. But these oligarchs are like Napoleon. They can order you. They can arrest you. They can take your money. They can go into your accounts. They can put the FBI on you. They've got enormous power. Sure. And, and yet the act as a business is the problem. And they're getting to where they're more comfortable doing it. And like you said, the press was there. Yay, arrest him. Oh, prison. Get Dinesh. Oh, I mean, seeing their own First Amendment annihilated in front of them, true political persecution, naked, and they so disconnected, they relished the tyranny. Well, I want to commend you. The book is Stealing America, Dinesh D'Souza.com, Amazon.com. Find it everywhere. Uh, get the book. Give it to friends and family. Try to wake folks up to the tyranny 
Uh, and, and, you know, I take away from this in closing, you got 30 seconds, that you've gotten stronger and more focused. They're going to make more films and work even harder and not let them destroy you. And that's absolutely right. I mean, I'm the wrong guy to send through all this. First of all, I grew up in India. So I walk into that facility. It's a, it's a lousy place. But the fact of it is that's not going to bother me. The moment I was assured of my safety, I said to myself, I'm going to use this to, to, to equip myself to come out more fired up. And I'm going to bring, in a sense, this information to even more people through movies and many other projects. I told you all so a lot of folks up. Movie. Yeah. Yep. D Dinesh so D'Souza, we want to... Next summer. We, we want to uh, totally commend you. God bless you. I hope to have you back, sir. Thank you so much. True political prisoner there, folks. A real canary in the coal mine. Stay with us.